Hello everybody, my name is Numad and welcome to episode 1 of my new State of the Game series. In this monthly series, I'll be going over the current state of the game, and more specifically the state of Mose and how she plays in the end game. Within this series, I'll be going over some builds that I made throughout the month that didn't quite fit my criteria to warrant a separate build video, and I'll also cover off how the hotfixes throughout the month affected Mose and her gear for her end game builds, while also covering off any newly discovered interactions or knowledge and so on and so forth that we might discover throughout that month. The point of this series will primarily be a sort of a monthly summary on Mose and her status in the endgame, and also a bit of a personal project for myself, just because I think it'll be interesting to see how Mose evolves and adapts to the meta as the game's lifespan continues on. Considering this is a completely new series for me, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this too, so let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Any and all feedback is all greatly appreciated. But with all that out of the way, I hope you guys enjoy the video, and let's just go straight into it. Alright, so for the first stop of this video, I thought we'd touch on a few builds that I wanted to make build videos out but didn't quite make the cut, and the first one on that list is Avalanche Mose. Now, this build isn't a particularly original or unique build made by myself. Psychotic Wolf, a fellow Mose um, YouTuber and streamer, also really talented, really knowledgeable, actually is the one that discovered the interaction between Snowshoe, Bloodletter, and Sparkplug, so I'm going to link his video in the um, description below, so feel free to check that out. But this build, Avalanche Mose, is my min-maxed take on it to try and push the build to its absolute limit, as I do for most of my builds. Um, so yeah, this is my own take on it, and yeah, we'll just get straight into it. So, much like Psychotic Wolf's uh, weapon loadout, we're using rocket launchers, so weapons like the Plague Bearer, the Mongol, and the Backburner are all highly recommended. However, the anoints we're using for this build are a little bit different. I highly recommend using the consecutive hits or the... Um, 390 anoint mostly because they just be able to deal a ton of damage and we're not under health gate to be able to use the um, 150 rad radiation anoint and overall I think the consecutive hits anoint is one of Moses best anoints just for a few reasons one of those reasons is because of Skagden um, so for those of you who don't know the consecutive hits anoint gets maintained by any sort of damage so whether that be grenade damage whether that be Iron Bear damage, whether that be damage over time applied by Skagden, for example, you can ramp up that consecutive hits anoint on your weapon itself. And because of this build, because we have Skagden, and because we have a Radiation Hex all applying damage over time onto the enemies, we're able to keep our consecutive hits anoint at max damage cap. And of course, the 390 anoint is the 390 anoint. We're going to be able to deal a ton of damage with that anoint. And also because the Snowshoe we have has the Shield Break amp effect or anoint sorry so that means that combined with the amp combined with the 390 anoint there aren't many enemies that will survive a single shot of your plague bearer so i find that those two anoints synergize perfectly and so yeah, that is the weapons out of the way and now for the interaction so like i mentioned psychotic wolf or someone in his uh community i'm not sure who it was um basically found out that you can use the spark plug, or spark plug launch pad is what um, Psychotic Wolf used, I believe. Um, so the spark plug actually counts as melee and slide for some reason, and so does the launch pad. So when you slam, you can proc shields that have melee effects. So how does that tie in with this build in particular? So the snowshoe basically on slide drains the shields and deals a cryo nova. So I'm sure you guys can see where this is going by slamming with the spark plug and putting that little Tesla coil in the ground. That counts as slide. So when enemies trigger that, it triggers the snowshoe, your shield breaks, and it freezes all the enemies nearby. Now, tangential to that, the snowshoe also regens health with its Nova. Now, we have a bloodletter rel oh, class mod, sorry. And what the bloodletter does is that it converts health into shield regen. So, when your snowshoe does its nova, it heals you. That healing goes to your shield to top up your snowshoe. Your snowshoe is back at maximum capacity. You slam again, the shield breaks, you get your healing, and there's an infinite loop. And as you can see in the gameplay below, oh, in the video, sorry, um, you're basically living in a snow globe with constant amps, constant freezing, and basically permanent crowd control. Now, so that's basically the primary interaction with this build. And as you can see, the snowshoe has the on-shield break. Next shot deals 100% shield capacity as bonus amp damage. 
Now this anoint scales very well when combined with Moses Fowling's Doctrine skill. What that skill does is it increases your shield capacity and weapon damage after every kill you get. And I'm sure at some points in the gameplay that you're looking at right now, you can see that I am averaging above 20 stacks of phalanx and a ridiculous shield capacity. This only helps to do more damage basically. Um, and so yeah, this synergizes very well with slow firing weapons like the rocket launchers we have, like the plague bearer, the mongol and the backburner. So yeah, that is the shield and the anoint I recommend. Now for the class mod itself, I recommend a bloodletter obviously with three in phalanx doctrine and two in thin red line now the two in thin red line isn't really for the shield capacity but just to stay just above health gate now being able to stay above health gate means we're able to stay alive a lot longer we have that sort of safety blanket and because of the health region sort of overflowing from the shield into hp which is a sort of hidden interaction between blood level helps you stay alive for much much longer and as you can see in the gameplay, I very, 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 very rarely go down. The, um, the stat rolls I recommend are splash damage, weapon damage, and melee damage. Because it's a Nova, it scales from all those things. And aside from that, we then move on to our spark plug loaded dice. Now, spark plug, we already covered off why we're using that. But the loaded dice is something new. And is what I think is the best uh, suffix to use for this relic. Loaded dice lowers our health, and as you can see, we're sitting at around 2000 HP, which is very, very easy to maintain just above health gate through the passive health regen that we have on our blood letter and our relic, as well as, like I mentioned, the sort of overflowing regen from our shield into our HP. It just helps us to stay alive a lot longer, and once again, I recommend AoE damage, melee damage, and health regen on the loaded dice. As for the grenade, we're using a hex. Just because it's a hex grenade, helps us apply our damage over time, which means we can maintain a consecutive hits anoint. So yeah, that's the gear out of the way. And as far as the skill tree goes, nothing too special. We have Skagged and we have Grizzle to help us get Iron back in case we need something to use target softening on, for example, bosses. We have three means of destruction. Because the Nova counts as a splash, helps us maintain our ammo regen essentially. So being able to have three means of destruction helps us regen our shield, stay alive, and just deal more damage over time. Talk cross promotion buffs the Nova radius, so having talk promotion means we can increase our splash radius and also increase the damage off that. We have one in pull the holy pin, only because we want to be able to proc redistribution. We don't really need any more points in that because we're not using a minesweeper, so any extra points in that is more or less wasted. We have five points of vampire just to keep us alive. One and two the last to help us maintain two angry to die guardian rank perk. And once again, just maintain our consecutive hits. And we have short fuse, just to help Mose on foot do more damage. We then move on to the green tree. And yeah, once again here, nothing too special. Just went all the way down to our capstone shield retribution. Now this is a severely underutilized capstone, but it's for good reason. But for this build, it works very well. Because our shield is breaking so frequently, we can very easily use that um, skill. And yeah, we always have it topped off, so we always get that 30% damage and that extra survivability because our shield immediately regenerates. And as far as green tree goes, once again we just get the redistribution to help us with ammo regen and also health regen. So yeah, that's it for Avalanche Mose, and we'll move on to the next build. Alright, so welcome back guys. This uh, next build that we're going to be covering is a punchy bear slash melee bear moves build um so yeah once again this is basically a fully fledged melee focused iron bear build um just because a lot of people have been asking if such a combination is possible and the answer is yes it is i have done guardian takedown and melee one takedown with this it's a ton of fun but yeah the reason why i didn't make a separate build video on this is because i already had my bfg iron bear moves build um or iron bear build sorry um, already on my channel so I didn't really want to double up on that so I'm just going to put the link to that in the top right corner so if you guys want a fully I guess fully detailed breakdown of the Iron Bear build feel free to check that out before you watch the rest of this video um, so I'm just going to quickly rattle off this build in a really quick summary so the weapons you want are basically any weapons that you prefer to run on Moe's um, the skill tree in particular is something very flexible and can offer Moe's a bunch of damage as well. So I use flippers, plague bearers, and mongols. However, you can use whatever guns that you prefer, honestly. 
the shield we have is any shield that will boost your HP. So I'm using a multivitamin old god because it gives our ember extra armor through having um, boosting Moses HP. The anoint I recommend is the um, iron bear cooldown anoint just because a lot of the other anointed shields aren't really that synergistic with it and for builds that use full rise of iron bear this anoint is probably the best in slot for those. Um, the class mod is the raging bear it's the gold standard of class mods at this point. The substats you want would be splash damage, weapon damage and action skill cooldown rate. Alternatively you can have the newly released action skill damage substat as well. The grenade we have is basically any grenade that will keep you alive. I'm using a Mervtacular Hex, however you can use a Cloning Maddening Tracker, Spring Epicenter, so on and so forth. The Anoint on Grenade Throw is always a reliable Anoint to have. And as for the Relic, we're using a Snowdrift White Elephant. Now we're using a White Elephant because the Iron Bear Stomps count as melee. So for those of you who don't know, if you do a quick crouch while an Iron Bear, you do a little booty slam, and with that slam, it counts as melee, which means it procs the White Elephant. So yeah, you can deal a bit of damage there and finish off enemies near you with your punches. As far as the skill tree goes, once again, basically a carbon copy of my BFG Iron Bear build. So once again, the link's got to be um, in the top right. So feel free to check that out for a, a complete skill tree breakdown. As far as the hard point specifically, you want Wild Swing. Wild Swing does splash, which means Iron Bear can heal off it through Vampire. The other melee hard points like your stock bare fist and close the distance, don't do splash, which means it doesn't count for Vampire, which means Iron Bear can't heal from the damage it does, which means Iron Bear will die faster. So make sure you have at least one wild swing hard point equipped just to be able to do that splash and heal your Iron Bear. I ran two, however, you can also run one closer distance and one wild swing. It's what I used in my um, Malibu takedown run that I did on stream a little while back. It was a ton of fun. Um, this build overall is really fun to do because it's fairly unique not a lot of people run it and yeah so yeah, that's that's basically the melee bear build and in the next section of this video we'll be covering off the hot fixes and how they've changed moses endgame okay so for the next section of this video i thought we'd cover off the hot the weapons that were buffed in the recent hot fixes that actually turned out to be pretty good for Moses. so as we all know gearbox releases weekly hot fixes nerfing and buffing gears and the uh, gear items in the game and not all the times that these hotfixes happen, those weapons actually turned out to be good. Unfortunately, the buffs that they receive aren't really that great, and it doesn't really make them worth using. But actually, this month in August, we actually got some fairly good weapon buffs that actually increased the build diversity for Moe's and gave her a ton of new weapons to play around with. And in no particular order, we can start this off with the Tig's Boom. The Tig's Boom is a Torg shotgun that can, dro that can drop in any, any element, from uh, Wotan the Invincible in the Mid Midnight Cairns Malawan Takedown Raid. And yeah, even before Mayhem 2.0, the Tig's Boom was an incredibly solid shotgun, but since Mayhem 2.0 came out, enemy HP scaling sort of made the Tig's Boom fall off in favor of other guns um, that Mercer started using. But since this recent weapon loss, the Tig's Boom has proved itself to be a very reliable and very powerful bossing and mobbing weapon. Now, as I said, the Tig's Boom can drop an early element, but if you guys uh, want, I guess, perfect efficiency, I recommend getting one of each element in the Times 18 projectile variant with the consecutive hits anoint. Now, the build I recommend to use with this Tig's Boom is something that has short fuse, tour cross promotion, and fire and skag done, as well as having some ammo regeneration from skills like forge or um, redistribution. Now, builds like the Triple Threat and Swiss Army Knife 2.8 build that I have on my channel work incredibly well with this build. Uh, with this gun sorry and yeah it's what i highly recommend if you're looking for a solid shotgun to use on mose because let's be honest since release mose hasn't really had many shotguns to play around with and the tig's boom definitely at this point in the game is filling in that spot so yeah tig's boom very solid shotgun really good on mose definitely recommend you guys try and grab yourselves one the next weapon on this unimaginative list is the complex root it's a dlc3 sniper and can come in any element now the thing about the root uh, or the buff that it received, was a decrease in charge time, making it so that you can fire it faster, and ultimately increasing your potential DPS output. Now, the thing about the root is that it is basically a tactical nuke in sniper format, and as a result, has the capacity to absolutely nuke the every enemy in a certain area, including yourself. Now, just because of that, I highly recommend not running any bonus elements when using the root. So, for example, if you're using a shock root, do not pick up fire in the skag den and do not use any action skill and anointments that give you elements just because firing that is got to down the enemies and yourself 
just because of the sheer radius and splash damage that the root possesses. Now, to make this actually usable on Mose, you can do one of two things. Potential number one, using a shock root with the transformer shield, and option number two would be to use a radiation root with the red suit. Reason being, those two shields give you elemental immunity to their respective elements, transformer giving you shock immunity, and radiation giving you um, radiation, I mean, the red suit giving you radiation immunity. And so, unfortunately, there aren't any other shields in this game that give you complete elemental immunity to the other elements, like fire and corrosive and so on and so forth. So currently, those are the two best shields to use if you're planning to use the complex route. Otherwise, if you still want to run 5 out of 5 Skag Den, or just bonus elements in general, just for the expect yourself to go down every one second. But that's not a worry, because you can almost always get the second win, just because of the sheer amount of splash damage the complex route is capable of. The next weapon we come across is the Mongol. It is a Vladov rocket launcher that drops from Thunk and Sloth in Conrad's hold, and yeah. It's a really, really solid rocket launcher and actually received some significant weapon buffs this month. Prior to this, the shotgun wasn't, I mean, the rocket launcher, sorry, wasn't really that great to use just because of the Mayhem 10 enemy HP scaling, but that doesn't mean that it was bad in any circumstance. It just sort of fell into a unfortunate circumstances having to compete with essentially weapons like the back burner, the plague burner, that are just really top tier weapons. But just because those guns are good doesn't mean that the Mongol is any worse. It's just, I guess, there are more preferable weapons to use. But now, since the recent weapon damage buff, the Mongol has cemented itself as a really solid rocket launcher to use on Mose. And honestly, I highly recommend anyone to... Uh, I recommend you guys to grab one if anyone is looking for an alternative to using the Plague Bearers or Back Commanders. Because, let's be honest, using the same weapon over and over again does get a bit boring. The Anoint I recommend is something like the 390 Anoint or the Consecutive Hits Anoint. But, as it's the rocket launcher, it can also spawn with the Splash Anoint, so I recommend getting the 200% variant of that. Just so if you're fighting bosses, that Anoint comes in real handy. And once again, the builds that I recommend would be something to do with uh, high splash damage, so things like Triple Threat and Swiss Army Knife again uh, are basically going to be the, the builds that I recommend for any of the uh, further weapons that I'm going to talk about for the rest of this video. The next Assault Rifle on this list is an Assault Rifle that came from favor to falling out of favor and now is back as a solid choice and that is the Ogre. Drops on the Anointed Alpha in the Anvil, and yeah, it's basically a really solid Assault Rifle for most to use prior to the Mayhem 2.0 release, but due to the enemy HP scaling, the Ogre sort of fell out of favor, but now it's back and better than ever, and because of its recent weapon damage buffs, it's a really solid Assault Rifle to use. Now, the Ogre and the Julius Dazzle are more or less the same. Julius Dazzle, in all honesty, is a better version of the Ogre. It does lack the magazine capacity that the Ogre has, but it's still a really solid assault rifle, and so is the Julius Dazzle. Combine that with the Skagnan and Short Fuse, and you'll be doing a ton of damage with that. And also throw in a Blastmaster class mod in the mix, and you got yourself a really solid mobbing and bossing tool to use for any content in this game. Now, the next few weapons we're going to cover off are actually Guardian take their weapons that weren't really that great when the game first came out, or when the raid first came out, sorry. But now, since its recent buffs, are really solid options, and those being the Smog and the Globetrotter. Smog is a Hyperion SMG, and yep, obviously drops some Scourge the Invincible, and the Globetrotter is a COV rocket launcher, but also drops some Scourge. Both of these guns were really mediocre for most specifically prior to um, these recent buffs, but now since then, they are incredible to use. So let's start with the Smog. Smog basically received a base damage increase, but also increased the damage it gets while having those amp shots while your weapon shield is active. Being a Hyperion weapon, obviously, it has a weapon shield, and the unique aspect of the smog is that every shot is amped for as long as you keep your shield full. Now, another thing about the smog is that every time you get a kill, your weapon shield refills itself. So, if you're using a really high fire rate smog with a class mod like the green monster, or a high damage output uh, class mod like the minesweeper, the smog performs really, really well. Especially if you're using an auto bear to draw aggro, so enemies are more likely to shoot auto bear than yourself, which means you can keep your Hyperion sh weapon shield up, and therefore increasing your potential amp damage with the smog. Now, the Globetrotter as well, as I mentioned before, is a really solid rocket launcher now, and is essentially very easily capable of room clearing. It's basically replaced the Yellow Cake in a sense for Mose, just because the Yellow Cake is no longer obtainable since the Revenge of the Cartels event left us. But yeah, we now have the Globetrotter, and it's an incredibly solid launcher to use. It can come in any element, and I highly recommend getting a Radiation one, just because Radiation seems to be a really good all-purpose element for most to use, and because it's a rocket launcher, does a lot of splash, has a lot of splash radius, 
and can therefore create those sort of radiation explosion slash blood explosion effects. And yeah, it's basically a really solid uh, COV launcher for Moose. And honestly, until the Yellow comes back, I highly, I highly recommend you guys to keep one for yourselves. The next weapon we're moving on to is the Sawbar. Now, this weapon went from zero to hero since its release. Sawbar on release in BO3 was really bad, to be honest, but since its recent weapon buffs, it got a very significant damage boost and is now incredibly, incredibly powerful. And yeah, highly recommend that to use with something like a green monster class mod or a mind super class mod. And just make sure with the Sawbar, much like its BL2 version, has, I guess, a finicky sort of uh, firing pattern and you have to sort of maintain your distance from the enemies. But once you use the gun enough, you sort of get a feel for that sweet spot you have to stand in to deal this maximum damage. And once you do, you're going to watch enemies melt before your eyes. Honestly, overall, really incredible um, assault rifle to use now. Really fun and also fairly easily accessible, dropping from Bormann Nates in the um, Meridian Metroplex. Sorry, not Metroplex, uh, Meridian Outskirts. Um, but yeah, so that's the Sawbar. And the next few weapons we're going to be discussing are Sniper Rifles. So Sniper Rifles has always been something that Moses has lacked options in, but now since their recent buffs, they have been incredibly useful and really fun to use. So let's just start off with the Headsplosion. Headsplosion is a Jacob Sniper and does splash on hits. Now already you can tell if it does splash, it's very good on Moose and the Headsplosion is no exception. I actually have a build coming out for that called Sharpshooter Moose coming out later on this week, so keep an eye in tune for that. And yeah, got to be going into more detail about why the Headsplosion is good in that video. But just as a quick summary, the Headsplosion does splash on hit and it ricochets three times on a crit as well, meaning that you're very easily capable of clearing rooms of enemies on a good crit shot. And as well as the Headsplosion, the ASMD and the Firestorm Sniper Rifle are also really good. The ASMD is a Skeet Shooter's Nightmare, uh, Dream, sorry, not Nightmare. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a really good sniper rifle to use. Basically, it has two firing modes. One is an energy bolt, the other is an energy orb. What you have to do is you shoot the orbs, swap to the energy bolt, and then shoot those orbs for a huge explosion. Now, obviously, when you hear explosions, you should know it's good for most. And the ASMD, once again, is no exception to that rule. But combining that with Skagged and a short fuse, for example, and you can deal yourself a ton of damage with that sniper. And the Firestorm as well. What it does is on hit, creates a lot of, I guess, meteors to essentially fall down from the sky, creating a firestorm. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's a really good sniper rifle. However, it is locked to incendiary, so it does hurt when, I guess, going against armored enemies. So for things like the Guardian takedown, wouldn't really recommend using a firestorm, just because you got to fight a lot of Guardians that are shielded. Incend was never really a good element to use in there in the first place. So yeah, wouldn't really recommend that. But for general mobbing and campaign playthroughs, Firestorm is a really solid option. And so, yeah. Those are the weapons that I thought were pretty good on Moe's now after their recent hotfix buffs. And, yeah. That's about it for this section of the video. Now, actually, this month in August, we didn't really find any, I guess, new discoveries or information for Moe's. And it's nothing that I haven't already mentioned in my other previous Ultimate Moe's Guide videos. So, typically, I would have, uh, I guess, gone over things like that. But, yeah. We didn't really find anything new for Moe's in that time. So I guess that's about it for the video. Now, I hope you guys got something out of this video, uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed. If, As always, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below, and I'll do my best to answer each and every single one. And uh, yeah, aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya!